Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, we're going to take our first dive into the particle section. To show a lot of these particle types, I'm going to jump right into the designer and jump to the particle section. Now I'll be jumping around. I'm not going to go linearly through all the parameters. Mostly you'll find this is all pretty straightforward. I just want to go through the things that aren't quite as obvious. So the particle type selector right here goes through all the different particle types that are either built in or allow you to define custom particles. These first five right here, sphere, glow sphere, star, cloudlet, and streaklet are all internally generated by particular. Sprites and texture polygons refer to using custom particles. And there's actually a custom particle library already built into particular that you can use or you can use your own. So we'll jump into those. And down here at the bottom, there's a couple recently added particle types. So these are actually organized at the bottom just to maintain backwards compatibility with previous versions. So you'll find most of these are pretty straightforward, like a sphere is essentially a spherical shape. But what I want to show you is how powerful the particle section is to go from the default settings right here to something that looks a lot more interesting. So I'll jump over to the color section and let's just talk a little bit about color. I can define one color to be assigned to every single particle that renders. This is setting the color at the start of the lifespan of the particle. I can also say use a gradient and have the particle move through the gradient over its lifespan. Let me turn up the particles per second here. So you can see at the beginning as the particles are generated from the point emitter, they start at red and they progress all the way through the blue at the end of the gradient. We can also have the particles randomly choose colors from inside that gradient. Now with regard to the gradients, there's a couple quickly accessible presets right here. But if you want more presets, as well as the ability to save your own custom gradients, you can double click on that color block and go to the color section. And there's a number of presets saved in here, as well as your custom section down here at the bottom. So anytime I make changes to my color blocks, let's say I randomize this, and I select save block, it will save all these settings right here, including how the color is set, the color randomization, and the gradient right here. So let me reset this back to using just the simple color from start and go back to some sort of orange. Next I'll move to the size rotation block, which again is pretty straightforward. This is parameters relating to the size and rotation of the particle. Being that this is a sphere, we're not going to see a whole lot of effect of using rotation on the particle, and that will come later. I'm going to turn up the overall size of the particles, but I'll go to the graph here and have the particle start large and then get smaller over its lifespan. I could do this two ways. I could go in here and draw the graph out, or I can click here to change this to a B-spline graph. But there's a couple quick presets in here that I can assign to my size, and again, just like the color there's also size and rotation presets in here. If there's something special that you use, some sort of exponential curve perhaps, you could always save that back to your library. Now note, when I loaded that block, it also saves the size with it. So it's not just saving the curve like it's doing here, it's saving all the parameters related to size and rotation. Now I said we're going to make this interesting, and right now I think this looks pretty flat. And the reason it looks flat is because all the particles, as they overlap and intersect each other, are essentially obscuring each other. We're not seeing any sort of color blending from one particle to the next. Sometimes that is useful, but I think in terms of motion graphics and having a nice aesthetic of our particles, using a blend mode to have our particle colors blend together is going to be ideal here. So we'll find the blend mode for a particle located in the particle section under the particle type itself. So if I select screen, now our particles are going to be using a screen blend mode as they overlap with each other. Now again, I didn't want to go through and over explain every single thing in here, but I do want to point out as I switch to the next particle type, a glow sphere, glow sphere is essentially two particle types overlapping with each other one standard sphere and one very feathered sphere. The main particle on the inside is using one blend mode and the separate glow area of the particle has its own blend mode here as well. So if you're using a glow sphere, you're definitely gonna wanna use something like a screen blend mode for that particle. Now I'm gonna bring this particle count back down just a little bit. So like I was saying, just a few changes to the particle settings, blend mode, color, can yield 
drastically different results than what you'll find with the default settings. So let's hold on to this. I'm going to duplicate this system, and we'll mix in another particle type with this. The next particle type is a star. Now, what is unique about the star versus the other two particle types is that this actually does allow for some sort of rotation. Now, like I mentioned, rotating a sphere isn't going to do much for us, but a four-point star does have some sort of orientation. Now, this star is actually a two-dimensional star. We don't have any XY control over this star particle. So if I go to the size and rotation, we're only going to be able to rotate this in Z. Z is the axis that's flat to our camera. So I can change the overall orientation. I can randomize the rotation, and we can also give it some rotation speed. Keep in mind, this rotation speed is one full rotation per second. So a little bit goes a very long way with rotation speed, as well as random speed rotate. So you don't want to turn these up too high. A very common thing that I see confusing particular users, especially when they're starting out, is that we can go in here and change this rotation dynamically. And it kind of looks like I can animate this and change all of the particle types over time. But I want you to understand that the rotation control here of the particle is the angle of the particle at the time it is born. So even though I can go through and change this, being that we don't have any keyframes set, we're seeing this whole thing dynamically update without any keyframes. So I don't want you to have it feel like I can change this over time and have all the particles change over time. If you want the particle rotation to change over time, you need to use the rotation speed. I bring that up because it's a very common question I see in forums and, and on social media. So I said we're mixing together a couple different particle types here. I'm going to change the particle size for these stars down to a pretty small size. Now there's something that I want you to take note of when I unsolo this system is that our stars and our glow spheres are exactly, and I mean exactly, aligned in the exact same positions. When I duplicate a system, the random seed, which is found in the emitter section under the motion block in the designer, this random seed gets duplicated with the system. If I add a system from scratch like that, if I just click on the plus and add a brand new system, this will generate a unique random seed. So anyway, moving along, if I go to this motion block here, I can change the overall random seed, and now we have our stars and our spheres in totally different places. Now for these stars, maybe I'll change this to something different that kind of works together with our orange, maybe something a little more red like that. I kind of think our glow spheres could be a little bit smaller too. I'm going to duplicate this one more, and I want to talk about the cloudlet particle, because the cloudlet particle is actually quite unique. So I'll go to this particle type, switch this over to the next particle type, which is the cloudlet, and we'll turn up the overall size. And in this case, we're going to turn down the opacity quite a bit. A cloudlet is a cluster of those sphere particles. When I turn down the opacity of the particle, though, we're not turning down the combined opacity as a whole unit. So in other words, we're not taking a cluster of spheres making that an image, and then turning down the opacity of the entire resulting image of spheres. We're turning down the opacity of each individual spheres in the cluster. And what that does is create a very detailed sort of cloudy kind of look. So when we're working with cloudlets, it really does help to turn this opacity down. In fact, I'll also turn up the opacity random. And for a cloudlet, I probably wouldn't use a scale over life, but I would have it fade over its life. Let's turn down the overall size and add some size random in here as well. So what this will do is add sort of a smoky backdrop to our particles. So I talked about the cloudlet, and let me duplicate this one more time, solo system four, and I want to talk about the streaklet. 
The streaklet is very similar to the cloudlet, but with one very big difference. Now with the cloudlet particle, every particle that is generated is random. Now it doesn't change over time, but as it creates particles, the particles, that cluster of spheres that make up the cloudlet is random. And that's how we get this sort of random smoky kind of look. Streaklet is not like that at all. Streaklet actually uses the same shape and cluster of spheres for every single particle. This becomes useful for creating sort of like streak kind of looks. So to get this look, I need to go to the emitter section and turn down the velocity and also turn down the velocity from motion. I'm going to turn up the opacity quite a bit. And as I scrub this around, we're going to start to see something that looks like more of a light trail. Now, when we're trying to make a streaklet trail like this, randomness is definitely going to be working against us. So I want to make sure to kind of reset all my things that are randomized, such as opacity randomness, size randomness, and even color randomness. There. Aesthetically, I think a, a lifespan of three seconds is pretty long, but something short like that will definitely uh, work out pretty well. So now as I draw this on, we'll see this sort of streaky-like trail uh, trailing around with the rest of our particles. A couple other notes about the streaklet that might not be so obvious. We have obviously a size control for the particles, but for the streaklet, we have an independent control for the actual streaklet size. So I can make the overall particle large, but I can turn down the overall streak size like that. We also have a control for the randomness of the streaklet, as well as how many streaks are actually drawn in the streaklet. So that is quite a bit of detail about the built-in particle types. The others down here, such as the square and circle, are really pretty straightforward. If I just simply add another system here and solo this, I'll go to the size, turn this up, And there's not much more to say about these other than that the square particle is actually a square and the circle particle is just a plain circle. You'll notice it says in the particle type that it does not respond to depth of field, which is kind of the point of the circle. It's basically a sphere that will not respond to depth of field. It will, however, respond to the aspect control. So if you turn this up, you can squish or squash your particles in one way or the other. Okay, I'll reset that. So this brings us to the topic of custom particles, and this is going to be a totally different topic for us, so I'm going to reset everything. So when I select something like a sprite, a sprite is going to use a two-dimensional particle, so a particle that's always flat and flat to the camera, so it doesn't have any X or Y rotation. To assign this sprite, I can go to the built-in particular library and select something out of the library here, such as a 2D shape. Now if I go back to this library and I select something that has some color in it, so I'm going to go into the 3D geometric shapes here. So let's select something like this one right here. So these have an orange kind of color to them. You'll notice that even though I change the color here, it is not affecting the particles. To affect the particles, I would need to select either colorize, which will tint it that color, or if I select fill, this will fill the RGB and keep the alpha intact of that particle. That is the short story with custom particles, but there are a lot of other options in terms of how the source media and the time sampling of the particle work together. If the particle lifespan is different than the source media, how does it work? If we have a seamlessly looping piece of footage, how do we control that? And that is the kind of stuff that we will cover in another lesson. So my name is Harry Frank. We'll see you next time.